Sorry for the lack of uploads, people, but the phone doesn't seem to stop ringing recently. We've dropped into this customer in Wrexham with a DAF LF Euro 6 with reports of an AdBlue false intermittently active on the dip. But, surprise, surprise, no faults currently active. Seems to be a growing trend recently for me, but we do like a challenge. We best find some diagnostics, such as gel tests from Eclipse, to help diagnose this issue. Best get this hooked up to the OBD port, and with the VCI powered up, we can head into gel test and try and make some sense of the customer's concern. We will head straight into ECS DC6 for our engine and emission diagnostic trouble codes, as PX5 and PX7 both combine these systems. And then we can head straight into the diagnosis. With a massive list of fault codes, we will target the reported concern, which is AdBlue. But what do we go with? AdBlue dosing module, abnormal pressure, or metering valve operation failure? The rule of thumb is the greatest number of occurrences wins. But just like the SCR fault, the power reduction fault, and the metering valve, these are all generic faults that get set with the system issues. So, abnormal pressure fault code it is. Let's get into this and try and induce this fault and monitor the AdBlue system. If we make use of JALTEST's brilliant guided diagnosis, we have system data here for what the pump should be making in the system, which is 9 bar, and a nice shortcut to the test which we can run to identify any potential faults. This test is split into two, priming and purging. Unlike older Denoxtronic systems which relied on air pressure, Denoxtronic 2.2 solely relies on an electric pump to pressurise and purge the system. With the system filling and our AdBlue pressure rising, I'm not seeing any issues. And with the system advancing to the next stage, which is maintaining pressure, I just caught the pressure dropping off. So, with this system unable to maintain its pressure, we can purge the system, and with our inverter valve and dosing valve commands operating correctly, the system pressure in a negative value will head into the pit and check where all the pressure is going. With no external leaks on the system, I'm going to pull this pump off and give the customer some options. It's time for a new pump, right? Not anymore. With me keeping every available part in stock, I will offer to rebuild this pump for the customer. The customer had been given a price from DAF of £1,800 and a non-genuine price for £550, but I'm sure I can do better than that. First, we need to see what's failed. With no AdBlue in the pump, we've caught it just in time. It always helps when we don't need to fit a new track in the pump that supplies the components with powers and grounds, etc. With the front and rear covers off, we can split this valve open and change the seals in here later from the rebuild kit. Here we can pull the pump out too, and we'll be changing that and also we can get to the root cause of 99% of these pump failures. As you can see from the close-up, this seal here has split and failed. I read a great case study from a university on this failure, and how they tried to improve the material I think it was, which I'll hopefully leave in the description if I can find it again. Anyway, time-wise, it took me about an hour to replace these parts and rebuild it, so we can jump back in the van, go back to the customer, and slap it back on the truck. I should really make one of these up as an exchange unit to keep on the van. Now, to validate the repair, we can go back onto JAL test and run the prime test on the AdBlue circuit. I'm currently making a test bench with an AdBlue circuit and pipes, so I won't need JAL test or a truck to run this test on rebuild pumps anymore. Once the system has managed to purge itself of air, we are now seeing some solid figures of the required 9 bar of pressure. 
I'm happy with the figures we've got here now. So we'll purge the lines and we can finish up clearing the faults and return the truck back to the customer who can then put it back into service. So what do you think? Not a bad job for an afternoon's work. It's all about time versus money. Would you just bite the bullet and fit a new pump or take the time to rebuild it? Let me know in the comments. What I find crazy is DEF don't offer a course on these pumps unfortunately, but from a technician's point of view, I think knowing how this system works inside and out is invaluable for diagnostics. I'm very much enjoying getting back into repairing things for people rather than replacing it, but in a video I've got in the pipeline, we will see how getting things repaired can really go wrong. Yes, I'm talking about the DAF PCI engine ECU repairs. As always, drop a like if you thought this video was something educational, subscribe if you want to see more diagnostic screw-ups from me, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully next week.